That's a really good one. Yeah, I love bean soup. How about you, uh, Hector? We're gonna favorite soup. So any soup? Any soup? Yeah. How about you, Anna? Yeah, just whatever comes Probably out of the pot. Know. Yeah, I'm a pea soup fan myself, and I love making it. Mm. Oh, I'm recording myself here. That's the whole town now knows. It'll be on Facebook pretty soon. It'll be on Facebook, and it will be about how much I love Hungarian mushroom soup. Or uh, or clam chowder, anything but the reality. Um, I was... I was told that you uh, you may have resigned from from uh, council today. Um, the uh, Tony Boom, the reporter from RB Times, said, "So is it two openings that are on uh, two openings?" And I'm like, "No, it's just one." Um, take a closer look at the packet. That that particular announcement is from 1945. The uh, packet has a, like an example notification from like two years ago or something. Oh, yeah. Tony wanted me to know if Dave Pastiza was also <laughs> stepping down. Why did he I think it's been the seat number. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we found out who's, what everybody's favorite soup was tonight, uh, Colette. What is yours? Yeah. You hold it down. Yeah. I just love soup so much. So Yeah, that's why you have to be careful to drop that's some some misinformation so that mm -hmm. it can be put on Facebook and everybody will know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, what's your favorite soup, Dave? Really? That's interesting. It's very measured of you. Yeah, because she wants to know what what your favorites are, so she can cook them for you. Well, that or you know, what looks better. Yeah, I, I think the answer always depends. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's the way I love, um, I love a lot of different soups, that's for sure. Um, all right. We have a quorum at this point, and um, I thought that um, Counselor Namrath, yep, she's on. Um, she was going to join us by. Oh, wait a minute. Does that mean she's on, or is that just oh, mean that you're back here? Yeah. Over there. So she said she was going. Oh, there she is. She's going to join us by Zoom. So you have. Uh, it, will she be able to? Um, uh, will she be able to participate from where she's at? Uh, she should be. I just asked for Councilor Prinamorov to unmute herself. Counselor, can you unmute yourself? I'll text her and see if she nodded and said yeah. Okay. Do you have do you have her on the screen? Can you see her? Yeah, she's chatting. Okay, I see her. Yeah. Counselor, can you hear us? Thank you, Hector. So when you unmuted me the first time, I then remuted myself, but then I couldn't unmute myself again. I remuted myself out of habit. So do I have to stay unmuted this whole time? No. No. So if I mute myself, will it let me? <laughs> and I'm sorry I'm not there. I'm not, I'm a little under the weather. 
not going to talk about soup. Not feeling great. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Eleanor. Um, I, you know, not feeling well. Thank you for joining us. And if, uh, if you decide that uh, it's, it gets tiresome, please, uh, please don't hesitate to, we've got a form at this point. Thank you. Yeah. I, that wasn't for you, Dave. <laughs> Um, with that, let's go ahead and call this meeting to order of uh, the Talent Urban Renewal Agency, uh, February 21st. Roll call, please. Councilor Pernamaroff? Here. Councilor Greider? Here. Councilor Pestizo? Here. Councilor Byers? Here. Councilor Here. Vice Chair Perry Miller? Here. And Chair Ayers Flood? Here. Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is uh, called, uh, let's see, speakers heard on non-agenda item. Hector, are there any speaker request forms? For uh, Tora. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is the consent calendar. There is uh, no items on the consent calendar tonight. Uh, item 4.1 is items from the executive director. Gary? And, you know, chairman, members of the board, uh, I have on the agenda, three proposed support letters for grant applications that we're in the pro process of preparing. I'd like to briefly talk about each one of those. Uh, I've prepared a draft support letter uh, for each of them. Uh, then following that, I'd just like to uh, provide uh, information on the status of the peer grant application. Very good. So the first letter is a support letter for a uh, Funding request through Senator Wyden and Senator Markley's office. Uh, this is the discretionary funding program. Um, forgot what the the title seems to keep changing of the program, uh, but it is basically a, a a grant request that goes through the congressional office rather than the agency, uh, and uh, the members of Congress. Senators and uh, House members put together a, a a list of projects that they forward to the various uh, committees and the uh, the revenue and taxation committees uh, for consideration to uh, insert into the budget bill or the the a variety of budget bills as they kind of go through the congressional process. So th this used to be a pretty common practice years ago. Uh, I would say maybe 10 or 11 years ago, the uh, practice uh, ceased um, because they uh, it just got kind of a bad name uh, because some of the requests kind of got large publicity. I think the most famous one was the Bridge to Nowhere in Alaska. Uh, so they... Uh, uh, terminated this program under uh, a, a previous congressional leadership, and now it has returned in a slightly different form, uh, a little more formal. Um, so there are three proposals that we're working on. One is a proposal for uh, $2 million that would come to the city uh, for the pur purpose of replacing the city's uh, asphalt cement. Um, or excuse me, asbestos cement uh, water pipe system throughout town. About 30% of the piping in town is uh, uh, thought to be AC pipe um, between 20 and 30%. Uh, that pipe is probably 50 years old. Uh, AC pipe came into popularity in the 1930s. Uh, it was the predominant method of piping for water systems uh, in the mid to late 1950s uh, through the 1970s. A lot of that pipe is uh, all over the country, is uh, uh, beyond or reaching its life cycle now. We experience a lot of breaks uh, in AC pipe uh, in town. It's difficult to deal with uh, because uh, of the asbestos mix of asbestos fibers in the pipe so when our public works employees cut into the pipe to uh, uh, disassemble breaks and put things back together, they have to wear special protective gear and take precautions because they're handling a 
uh, hazardous material. Uh, and the uh, uh, debris also requires special handling. So uh, the AC pipe is now at an age where it's considered somewhat unreliable. Uh, it gets more brittle with age. Uh, so we're putting in, putting in a request for uh, $2 million on an estimated total cost of $2.3 million. This would have uh, a benefit also in discussion of rates down the line, because uh, this is a project that ordinarily would be covered in the, in the, in the water rate or over a period of years. So if this was uh, approved, it would have some effect on the uh, city's water rates, easing the increases that might be coming down the line. Uh, so far, we have a letter of support from the Oregon Health Authority, uh, and I'm expecting a letter of support tomorrow from um, Fire District 5. Uh, we need at least one more. There's one on the agenda tonight from the Urban Renewal Agency. Uh, the more letters of support, the better. The minimum is three. So that's that project. Any questions on that project? Oh, yeah, the pipe is safe uh, if uh, it's not broken. So it's not a, not a has not considered a hazardous material when it's intact. Um, question? question? Uh, Council Pan uh, Member Panamaroff? Thank you. Um, so for letters of support, have you thought to ask uh, Medford Water Commission? Um, would they be likely to... Give you some that. I've, I've I've tried to reach out to the Medford Water Commission I, and haven't been able to reach their the appropriate staff person there. Okay. Uh, I'll continue to do that. We have until Friday to gather these letters up. Some of the agencies take a while to get into the process to get their governing boards to approve uh, letters. So um, we're still continuing to get a letter from measured water. Okay, great. Well, I just want to say um, well done as far as uh, asking for this money. It would be very useful to get. Uh, next one is uh, for town hall improvements. Uh, this would be a $600,000 ask uh, for rehabilitation of the town hall. We're indicating in our application that the town hall is used for multiple purposes, not just council meetings and commission meetings, but is also used by uh, uh, the uh, uh, Talent Business Alliance and by Access uh, and by other organizations. Uh, now it's more limited uh, because of its condition. Uh, we're noting in the application that we have a um, uh, a structural engineering report uh, that expresses concerns about the condition of the building and actually recommends that we not have the building in active use during snowstorms uh, and during periods of high wind. Uh, so there is, there is a uh, somewhat urgent need to take care of the structural issues with the building. Uh, we have a uh, uh, letter of support from from uh, George um, Kramer. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we need, some, I, I'm working on an additional letter uh, or two. So it looks like we'll make the, the minimum of three, but um, that's, a, that's a basic outline of, of the project. We haven't gone into detail in the application as to what would actually take place. We're just giving a kind of a broad estimate of what the cost might be. Yeah. Uh, Council um, uh, Member Byers. Would it be helpful to who are the people, who are the entities that you've received the letters of support from for this project? I'm sorry, I can't, I can't hear you. Who are the entities that you've received um, letters of support from for this project? Uh, I've uh, requested a letter of support from um, a local historical society group through. Uh, Tessa 
is uh, working on trying to uh, acquire that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've requested a letter of support from the Talent Business Alliance. Okay, great. Sorry to make get our three. Any 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 questions on this one? All right. The last so, one is sorry, of, just yeah. one question. This is these are due by Friday as well. What was that? These are due by you need these all by Friday, Gary. All by Friday. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Actually, the application deadline is Sunday, oh. but it would be nice to get it in by Friday. Okay. Thanks. Although, <laughs> although we will all be working on some. <laughs> um. Final one is a new a new one that uh, came up at sort of the last minute. Uh, there's a program in the federal government called the Community Disaster Loan Program. Uh, and I have written uh, applications for that program in the past that were successful. Uh, what that program is, uh, is that it's, it's, a, it's funded through FEMA. It's typically not funded in the federal budget. It's uh, kind of used as a spot program for these kinds of requests. Uh, and the uh, original intent was to provide a vehicle for the federal government to, to um, flow money to local agencies that have been adversely affected in a disaster and have had a severe impact to their tax base so that the local agencies could continue operations uh, through a loan program until their tax base recovers. And at some point, uh, those agencies could then apply to have their their loan forgiven. Uh, I was able to secure such a, a loan and ultimately a grant, not for a city, but for a public utility, uh, a railroad. Uh, and uh, you know, it worked out quite well. Um, so I, I looked at how can we make an argument for for this uh, this program, and the city has about four point three million dollars in existing debt, uh, all in the water fund, uh, and that of course also has an impact on rates going forward. And there are a couple of balloon payments coming up in the next few years, so it, it occurred to me that it might be an attractive project for the uh, legislative leadership to sort of sort of replace that loan, which is a consolidated loan from several different years and programs with this 50 year 1% uh, interest loan through the Community Disaster Loan Program. And then in a few years, go back to them uh, and uh, request forgiveness of all or part of it. Um, I, I, also, I also added on here something that I doubt they'll approve, uh, but it would be a, a, a $2 million standby line of credit that the city can access in the event that we have um, uh, a continuing lack of revenue. Uh, it's a concern I have is, is how fast is the city going to recover its property tax base? Property tax revenue typically lags New construction by maybe a couple of years. Uh, you know, I I think we're recovering, um, but just to have that standing by would be, uh, I think, somewhat of a comfort, uh, even if we never use it. Hopefully, we'd never use it. I'm not sure they'll go for that, but sometimes you got to be creative and see what happens. So that one, I'm. Um, I'm really needing additional letters of support for. So those are the three that I have on tonight. Uh, and uh, uh, I'd ask that you uh, authorize the executive director to sign letters of support for all three of those. Do you need a motion for that? Yes. I'll entertain a motion, member Byers. I move to authorize the executive director to sign letters of support for the grants outlined on behalf of the Tura um, board. 
second. We have a motion and a second to authorize the executive director to sign letters of support uh, on behalf of the Toro board. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Oh, oh uh, did, did you get Panamarif? Yeah. Any opposed? Thank you, everybody. Item number five on the agenda is items from chair or board members. Any items from chair or board? Oh, I'm sorry. You wanted to go to peer funding. Yeah, I wanted to mention that uh, the peer uh, grant application was, uh, uh, is, you know, being reviewed now by the uh, by the committee, and they next meet on March 7th. Uh, so far, they have received one public comment, and I'd like to uh, distribute that to the board members this evening. Sorry to uncouple you. Uh, and uh, I, I also found uh, today, Wednesday. with the mayor, mayor's help, uh, a uh, uh, comments that were submitted by uh, members of the committee. It's very hard to read, but um, because it's small. But it, it basically, uh, it's the when you look at that list, it's the longest comment. <laughs> so it, it basically talks about the need to address. Uh, climate change issues better uh, to address the transition of the current residents from the site. Uh, and I'll be working with Tom to prepare, Tom Humphrey, to prepare a response to that, uh, to those comments. This one is, sorry, this one is comments from the committee that's reviewing. Committee members. I, I believe those are the comments from OHCS. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, which is the state agency that's overseeing um, all of the HUD funding coming through. You know, one thing I did want to point out, and I may have said it in our meeting the other day, is from reading this, I got the impression that maybe this like arm of OHCS doesn't doesn't have uh, as much detail on um, on the transitional yeah. housing project. Um, it it really I it read like um, they didn't understand how. Um, transitional the housing is yeah. and um uh, the irony of course is that a, a, almost uh a large a large part of the funding for that did come from ohcs but i'm suspecting that it's from a different department of ohcs yeah when you read that one little piece there that talks about the uh residents of the uh mobile home park of, of the trailer park being displaced, yeah. It, it, one might interpret that as thinking that they are, are permanent residents there, yeah, and it, which is not the case. So we'll, we'll need to, I think, provide some clarifying. And so I think um, reaching out to Julie at OHCS, I think we have the contact information if you need it. We can okay. forward it to you, and maybe just giving. Uh, I I'd be happy to join you on that conversation because I was actually part of some of the original conversations with OHCS about, uh, we were just about to go to RFP on the um, community-led vision for that property, the mixed use. We were just about to go to RFP. We were starting to design one when the fire happened. And I was in some of the earlier discussions with OHCS about ceasing, um, ceasing that project in order to have transitional housing um, there. And um, so if it's helpful, I have a little bit of history that I could join you on that conversation. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, the public comment period is open until the last day of this month. So there may be additional comments coming. Uh, uh, Member Greider? And you have a meeting with access at the end yes. of this month? This coming next week. Okay. Yeah. Let the sirens go by. All right, any additional Boy. updates? Here comes the truck. Sorry, I have to look at Pulse Point. It's just. 
Oh, it's a structure fire on FOSS. That's unfortunate. Do you know what the address is? Yes, it is 1389. That's pretty far down. Yeah, that's too bad. Um, all right. Hmm. Were there additional comment or uh, reporting for the peer funding? Uh, the, the comment period goes to the end of the month. Okay. But I, hard to say, usually comments come in at the early stage. Okay. Um, so the comment period uh, goes to the end of the month if anybody didn't hear that. Um, all right. Uh, so then with that, we'll go ahead and move on to items from the chair or board members. Anybody have anything? Uh, Member Byers? Um, acting in an unofficial liaison capacity between uh, Tura and Coalition Fortaleza. I do want to just make Tura board members aware of the fact that one of the mobile home parks that we were anticipating residents of the gateway to be able to move to Royal Oaks is not going to be habitable anytime soon for the foreseeable future. Is that because of the trailers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that uh, in leadership meetings, we've discussed letting residents in the gateway know about timeline and just being really clear about communicating the process and where things will be. And uh, because it's there's even fewer options for them to relocate to. I think it's really important that we be very communicative in what's going on. Um, so folks can make their plans. It would be good. Uh, thank you, by the way, uh, Member Byers, for your leadership uh, in those discussions. And I'm I'm just wondering if, you know, in our uh, weekly meetings that we can start to talk about formulating a communication plan, mm -hmm. I'm really to kind of get you up to speed on on who the players are and who the contacts are and and how frequently we probably need to be doing outreach now that that resource is offline mm -hmm. there's probably some good information from rogue, rogue action center as well huh nicole are yeah, you guys tracking been, that yeah i mean we've been trying yeah to I just think it'd be worth come up with. Yeah. But we actually also um, had it on our radar to try to reach out to access and just be sure that they are really aware of because they I know they've been very busy and just want to make sure that they are really aware of the situation and just because we talk with them pretty regularly. That's great. Is anybody, is anybody aware of um, anybody convening? like a round table discussion about kind of like measuring where we're at and is there any um regional discussions about that member writer at this point they're not really the ltrg was hosting some of those um with multiple organizations but there's been a big focus now on um, the resiliency mm -hmm. grants that are coming out and there's a network that's been meeting with it, which has involved access and a lot of those key players. So um, no, and that's why we wanted to make sure they're aware that it will be urgent soon. I think that might be a good discussion to lead perhaps at some point in time. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, very good. Question? Question? Uh, oh. Yep, member Panamarath. Thank you. Um, I'm also, I'm wondering if um, Councillor Greider or Byers knows about uh, whether Renaissance Flats um, is a, a viable option for folks or the mayor, because you were there at the opening, um, uh, for for folks coming from the gateway. I know it's, it's a little bit different kind of, it's not subsidized, it's just kind of reduced rents. Um, at least that's the way it was explained to me. I'm just wondering if that's, um, is that a pathway forward for uh, those folks at all? I can tell you what I know. Uh, when they uh, had the event there, um, I did get to talk to um, the, uh, what's the name of the, um, uh, with, of the, uh, of the um, 
developing fortified uh, i think it's commonwealth yes it's commonwealth and commonwealth and marsh and um and then leadership from ohcs and access and they all said that um they are um, processing applications from the gateway um but it, i know that it's a uh, part of the discussion that gary's going to have at, with access at the end of did you say the month the end yeah. of the month next week next week so um That'll be part of the update that we get from access and like just actual numbers. And, um, but yeah, I was assured um, at that event that, that applications were being processed. Good from news. Great, thank you. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is anything else from board members before I move? Um, written communications, there are none. And so with that, we'll adjourn the meeting at 631 and reconvene for council at 645.